Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Corey, better known as the Seaman, and I want to welcome you to another edition of the Seaman's Cinema. Sit down. That's right, folks. I tried to get out of the comic book corner a little bit by backtracking to some movies that we had seen, but I've been pulled right back in because it's yet again time for another, uh, you know, nerdy adventure or story, if you will. So you know the drill, folks. Pull up a chair, take a seat. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about this guy. Now, not that guy, but that character. Uh, we, of course, are talking Solo, a Star Wars story. Um, this movie is not perfect, I think is a good way to say it. right? I don't think anyone expected this to be a perfect mo movie. Um, you know, after the departure of Lord and Miller... And the bringing in of Ron Howard, uh, I think a lot of people thought this film was set up for a disaster. Um, you know, a supposedly strong script from Jonathan and Lawrence Kasdan, um, you know, kind of got you a little bit excited. But then Alden Ehrenreich seemed like an odd choice. All that being said, um, I think overall Ron Howard does a good enough job with what <clears throat> with what they have. Um... And and this movie is fun enough, and Alden Ehrenreich wins you over enough um, to 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 make this enjoyable. Uh, am I jumping out of my seat for this movie? No. Um, is it a top end Star Wars movie? No. Um, but can you go to this movie and have fun for sure? Uh, you know, and and it feels like a Star Wars movie. Um, maybe even a little bit more than Last Jedi um, did, although I think Last Jedi a better crafted film. Um, so, I mean, I think that is kind of where this one falls. It just kind of lands in the, you know, it, it's fun, um, you know, but it's not something that we're going to be talking about, kind of like the way Rogue One was, right? I mean, it's obviously, it's not a saga story. It's very tied into the saga, um, but didn't deliver, I think, as well as Rogue One did. Um, on a couple different spots, but before we just ramble on and on and on about Solo, a Star Wars story, you know how I like to roll. I like to start with the bad and end with the good, uh, so hopefully you guys are excited to go see, um, you know, whichever flick it is I'm talking about. Tonight, I'm talking about Solo, so let's start with the bad, um, and like I said, there are ups and downs through this whole film. Uh, it's got some really nice moments, and it's got some not-so-nice moments. Um, I think the the biggest thing for me is that it, it, it's kind of lackluster uh for a star wars movie um i didn't think it met the standard for star wars action um yes we get some nice millennium falcon moments um but yeah yeah i don't i don't, it just never like i said it feels like a star wars movie um you know i love that we have practical effects and costumes throughout uh, as well as the visual effects, um, you know, and special effects that are utilized. Um, but, yeah, it just, it, it's lackluster. And it doesn't have that pop, right? Like, whether you liked Last Jedi or didn't like Last Jedi, uh, there are some humongous Star Wars moments in that movie uh, that, that are undeniable. You know, whether you liked it or didn't, there are moments in that movie that you cannot deny are just wonderfully big Star Wars moments, and there's Star Wars things, but there, there's no big moment in this movie, and I mean, look, I, I didn't say it at the beginning, but this is a spoiler-free review of Solo, a Star Wars story, and I, I can say this, I think, without it being a spoiler, uh, we knew one of the things that we were going to tackle in this movie was the Kessel Run. Um, that should be your big Star Wars moment, that should be the thing that everyone is talking about. Um, and it's not, it, it's good. Um, you know, you, I enjoyed it. Um, it, and it's, that's, I think the thing for me throughout this movie, I, I felt a lot of nostalgic senses, right? Like instead of having big pop moments, um, you know, like the first time Han and Chewie get in the seats of the Millennium Falcon, you know, which happens during the Kessel run, you go, Oh man, like there it is. That feels right. That looks right. Um, and you get those types of moments, but it never really popped. 
Um, and I thought that was the gimme one, right? That was the one that everyone had to be anticipating. That was the thing that everyone was waiting to see. And that was the thing you would expect to be your big moment. And it's, it falls flat. Um, and, and like I said, all the mo- <laughs> when you have those nice moments, they're nice. Uh, but there's no big, big pop, which was kind of disappointing for me. Um, the other thing that, that like I don't entirely enjoy or like about this movie is it, it feels very much like a Han Solo checklist movie. Like It was like, okay, here's a, a list of all the things we know about Han Solo that we've never seen on screen before. Um, you know, first interactions, how he meets Chewie, how he meets Lando, how he meets the Millennium Falcon, how he gets his pistol, how, you know, just all these things. And the whole movie just feels like it's a constant checklist. We're just checking off one thing after another. And that's kind of upsetting and disappointing for me to just check them all off right away in this first one. Um, Because I do think that Alden Ehrenreich does enough in this movie and this movie does enough that if another one came out i would i'd be for a second solo movie um i would go check out a second solo movie you could drop and and i'm imagining that the plan is that they're going to do more um at least i would imagine that's what the plan must be and if you're going to do that it would be nice to sprinkle some of that through yes it is nice at you know from that nostalgia feel to see those things i don't know if we need to see all of them um, you know, and then the the story's really predictable. Um, look, I think it's a fun story. I think some of the adventures we go on are fun, um, and we'll talk about those, but it, it's fairly predictable, and, and so much so that the movie itself kind of predicts things that are going to happen out loud. Uh, it's things that get said then also tend to happen, um, and it is, it's, you can see things coming a mile away. Um, you know, but outside of that, uh, uh, look, I was kind of disappointed with Amelia Clark. Um, I like Kira, uh, and, and where she fits in the solo story and, and how the character, like where the, like I said, where the character fits. Um, I like the Han and Kira story enough, but I didn't think Amelia Clark brought a ton to the table. She's good. Um, you know, it's not like she's bad, but she's... It, nothing that like outright impresses me with Amelia Clark, which you know it, it kind of feels almost like I don't know it. Like she works so well in Game of Thrones, right? And I just I don't know if that level reaches here, um, which is you know kind of disappointing because I like Amelia Clark. Um, Paul Bettany. Uh, I tell you what, it was really refreshing to see him have some fun and really get to put something into what he's acting. Uh, he's been Vision, it feels like, the last three times we've seen him in films. and He's really, really good as Vision, but Vision is a very, very straight, kind of even character. There's not a lot of... Not that there's not a lot to explore, because I think he's a very deep character, but there's not a lot of, you know, visual <laughs> like expressions, you know? Uh, and he does, he gets to do that, you get to see him have fun, but as a villain, uh, he's kind of our big bad, so to speak, um, Dryden Voss. it's a weak villain, and it feels like you wasted a really, really good piece of acting talent with Paul Bettany, like I said, he, he puts his all into the character, so much so that maybe it even comes off a little over the top sometimes, um, but I think he was just trying to do as much as he could with the very little amount that he had. Um, and overall, he's not really a great villain. Uh, you know, I'm never really totally scared. Uh, he does have what could have been like a really cool element to him um, when it comes to his aggression. Um, and it looked cool visually, um, but maybe not utilized as well as it could be. I don't know. I just felt like he wasn't really utilized that great. Um, same with Donald Glover. Uh, I'm definitely going to talk about Donald Glover on the good. Because I love Donald Glover. But I don't think they utilized Donald Glover as well as they could have. Um, you know, I almost... It almost feels like it almost could have been better served had Lando maybe just passed through this movie and then got his own. Where he really could have let Donald Glover dive in and explore um, and play with this character more than he gets to here. Uh, he feels kind of held back. Um... 
which is disappointing um, because I love, like I said, I love what Donald Glover does. I think there there was more to be had um, with the Lando character. Uh, same goes for Woody Harrelson. Um, like I said, I don't think Woody's bad in the movie, um, but Woody is Woody in the movie. Uh, his character isn't. There's nothing really to pop it. You know, nothing really pops or is special with his character. It's kind of just Woody being Woody. Now, that being said, I like Woody's interactions with Alden Ehrenreich. Um, I think through the heist portion of the movie, and I guess we'll kind of start to transition ourselves into the good now, um, I, I really enjoyed the heist scene. The heist scene is a lot of fun. Um, and again, uh, another scene, though, that I think could have had like a, a bigger pop to it. Um, but I, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed the whole heist aspect of the movie that happens early on and the interactions that Alden Ehrenreich has with Woody. And like I said, Woody's Woody, and I love me some Woody. So I, I certainly didn't dislike his character, but I, I, again, I, it, it felt like Woody was a little wasted. Like it, it, more, something more to that character would have given Woody more to play with, and that I think could have been more fun. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think a lot of the characters and actors fall a little flat and just don't feel like they were totally utilized that well um, or to their best utilization. That being said, the guy I expected to say that about more than anybody else was Alden Ehrenreich. And in all honesty, I think he's one of the best things in the movie. Um, now, yes, does he get outshined in the movie at times? For sure. Would he definitely steal some scenes? Donald Glover for sure steals some scenes. Uh, and Jonas uh, Suotamo, uh, I'm trying, <laughs> but Jonas, who uh, is the new Chewbacca, um, 29 years old, I believe, something like that, uh, younger kid playing Chewbacca, he, I think, steals the movie for me. I love Chewbacca in this movie. Uh, Chewie is awesome, and, and because it's a, a younger person in there, Chewie kind of gets to do some stuff that we haven't totally seen Chewie do before. Um, and gets to kind of move in some ways we haven't seen him use before. And it feels like a really good, fully visualized version of Chewbacca. I uh, really, really enjoyed uh, that. I enjoyed the humor. The humor in this movie, very Star Wars. It feels like Star Wars humor. Uh, and the back and forth between uh, Chewie and Han is great. Uh, I love the way they meet. Like I said, this feels like a checklist movie. Um, but that check in the checklist box... That's probably my, my favorite part of the whole movie. Uh, the first encounter between Chewie and Han. Uh, now Alden Ehrenreich, I think, has a little bit of a struggle uh, in his delivery of something that happens in that scene. But uh, that aside, it doesn't really detract from the scene at all. And, and it, it really lets you kind of understand the relationship between Han and Chewie. Uh, it is an odd thing that he does, uh, considering we haven't really seen it anywhere before. But... It doesn't not make sense, um, but I do, and I think Alden Ehrenreich, I don't know if he's my Han Solo, I still don't know if I would cast him, I'm not his biggest fan, um, but I thought he did a lot better than I anticipated uh, him. He's the one thing in this movie uh, that exceeded my expectations. Uh, they, were, they were fairly low, and I th thought he did a good job, it took him a while to get his footing, um, but once he does, he slowly starts to win you over. Now, he's not going to be a Han that you totally recognize. Um, you know, I think Aaron Reich tried to make the character his own. Um, but he does do things that are solo. You know, he has moments that you really go, you know what? He, he feels like solo enough where I'm not upset with him. And the reason I would be in for a solo too uh, would be... To just watch Alden Ehrenreich and Chewie. Uh, to watch Han and Chewie go on an adventure. And <clears throat> that's the thing as we get to transition over to Lando. That that it feels like the movie should have been. It feels like this should have been... May, maybe this should have been more of a, a Han and Chewie movie. You know, maybe have Lando come into the movie. You know, have him pass by. Maybe have him meet Han. Maybe have Han get to see the Millennium Falcon. But save all of that for maybe another movie. Uh, I think if this would have been, if they would have played into the Han and Chewie aspect of this movie, almost like a buddy cop film, um, I think this movie could have been great. Because um, I think there is something there with Alden Ehrenreich 
and uh, Jonas Suatamo um, with their their interpretations of Han and Chewie. I, I think there's a lot more there, and I would have liked to have watched more of that um, than some of the other stuff that we get in this movie. Um, but like I said, uh, you know, and Tanny Newton pops in for a little bit. Uh, I really enjoyed her. Um, the one thing I didn't mention in the bad that I really didn't like at all in the movie uh, is the female android L337. Um, I just thought it was dialed up too much and everything about it. Uh, the way it moves, the way it delivers its lines. I just... I, I liked part aspects of the relationship between her and Lando. It's, it is weird at times, but I, I don't know. I just didn't really care for the android. Um, and also, just on a side note, um, you know, we recently had stuff come out about how Lando's, you know, Lando here is a pansexual character. Uh, I know this is a non-spoiler movie, but there's literally nothing in this movie that I saw anywhere that really kind of would stand out to go, oh yeah, he is. Um, so it seemed like an odd thing to throw out there. Um, I didn't mention that also, you know, along with L3 in the bad. But, like I said, I love me some Donald Glover, and he's awesome with what he has. Um, you know, he just oozes charisma and charm, and when he's, the first time he smiles, you just go, there it is, man. Like, it's there. He, You know, and I think everyone expected him to crush it, and he did. But like I said, I, I don't think we got to see him fully explore or play with the character. And I think maybe it would have been better served to have him pass through this one. Um, but I think there was a lot of worry with all the Narenreich. And we were like, hey, let's get Lando in this movie to kind of help push it along. And I'm not going to lie to you, I think I would have preferred just a, just a Han and Chewie movie. Um, so if you do go into a Solo 2, I'm totally on game for a Han Chewie movie. Um, so that's it. That's all I gotta say. That's that's all my thoughts. Um, this movie, I think, is good enough. I think it's fun enough. I think Alden Ehrenreich wins you over enough um, to enjoy it. You know, it, it's... Like I said, I think it's lackluster uh, overall. Um, it never has that big moment. Um, but, like I said, it's fun enough. Uh, I, you know, I, I enjoyed it. You know, it was not... I'm not gonna say it wasn't worth seeing. Uh, you know, it's definitely worth a see. Um, certainly could have been better. But that's it. That's all I got to say. So what do you guys have to say? Please hit the comments below. Let me know all of your thoughts. If you've seen the movie, if you haven't, have I enticed you to go see it? Uh, let me know. Hit those comments. If you are new here, please hit the subscribe button and the little bell so you get alerts every time I make a new video. Uh, for the Seaman Cinema, sit down. I am the Seaman. I am signing off. Peace.